The way that the base assembles is actually the same for both the leader and the follower. And as I've already assembled the leader and done it slightly wrong, and I don't want to take it to pieces to show you again, I'm going to show you with the follower. It's identical, apart from the colour's different. Um, there are three pieces for the base. There's the bulk, there's the clip, and there's the clamp. So the bulk is as it sounds. It's got fixing holes front and back, and it's going to house the servo. It's going to fit in there. It's quite tight fit. The clamp goes on the front here, and it finishes this bearing surface. There's a spare bearing. There's a spare passive servo horn, in fact, which forms a bearing by screwing to the underside of the pitch rotation piece. And that's going to sit in there and stiffen up the base joint. I've covered that a couple of times. The way to do this is to preload these holes with screws and then screw on the passive horn and do that down tight. The top end just goes on like normal. And the last complication is of course for wires. So one wire is going to pass back through this hole and one wire is going to come up here and then pass there underneath the clamp and the clamp is marked with this raised boss to show you which way around it goes. You've got to see a gap there, that's where the wire comes out. Put that on backwards, well it's just obviously wrong and the servo won't fit. Okay, so start by plugging in both wires on your servo. Make sure they're clipped in nice and firmly. Make sure they're clipped in. And when we hold it up to the base, you can see that this wire is going to come around that side. See that? That side indicates which way this wire is going to come in. So that means this wire goes through the base. So, with it threaded through, connect this up, search for it on your GUI, and set it to be in the middle. Now, on the follower, of course, this is powered, so you're going to set it to be powered. Also set the angle offset. 1024 and that will now allow you to push on a driven servo horn and then screw it down straight away as you don't have a clearance to add these screws later and I'd rather not put it in because it will make the structure weaker in a place where I don't think it should be weaker. So that servo horn is attached, making sure that your wire is passed through the right hole. Pull that servo into position, push it all the way back. And you can see in that hole, just here, you can see where the back of the servo is. And there shouldn't be any gap there, it's gone all the way back. This wire goes up. And it goes through this servo collar, this servo, the base clip, and it goes through the base clip. Making sure nothing's pinched, push it all down, and it should click down nice and firmly like that with the wire pass through. If that falls off, don't worry about that, just push the passive horn back on, and now you can start to attach the rotation pitch piece. That should just slide on easily like so. And you can secure the top. With four screws, engage all four lightly. Now, okay, 
giving us a good position. Set that back to center. Then pull the power. Then, then pull the power and you can move this around. With a slightly smaller screwdriver, you can just about see the top of those holes. So you line them up and screw those into place. And then finally, you can attach the front of the clamp. You can attach the base clamp and then you can attach the base clamp with a couple of screws. This is why screws are not used on production lines, if people can help it, they're very annoying. But that will produce a nice rigid joint in the base. And then you can continue with assembling the rest of the arm. So, these can then be screwed here and here and here to hold everything together. And there's an electronics plate which will slide down and allow the electronics to be held, like so. If you want, this wire will probably also fit through this hole on the top, so there are ways of doing that. Okay, 